Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to teach you why you don't know how to analyze your own gameplay and you just don't know what's going on in Monster Hunter. The reason you keep getting hit and or you, you're just generally confused about the flow of Monster Hunter gameplay is because you don't understand the five states of neutral that you can be in or the five states that your hunter is in at any point during gameplay. So let's just go through all of them and by the end of this video, you will understand the gameplay of Monster Hunter a little bit better and it'll allow you to make better decisions during combat. So let's start off with the easiest one. The first one is not neutral, AKA animation lock. So you're doing an attack and you literally cannot do anything. It's, it's, it's as if the game has fully shut off all control to your controller, keyboard, whatever controller you're using. And no matter what buttons you press, you, nothing will happen. And for here, I have animation lock. So it's typically all attacks, uh, you know, all the startup frames or the active frames of the attacks. Even here, I have climbing up the ledge. This is the source of getting hit for a lot of things in Monster Hunter. Under this state, the only thing that can happen is uh, you take damage. So let's type that right here, take damage. Now, obviously the monster might whiff, but that's usually unlikely because they have tracking and it's an AI and they're just not going to be programmed to whiff. Usually if they whiff, it's due to some environmental factor like uh, uneven elevation or slope or something like that. But for all intents and purposes, they are locked onto you. And if you are locked on by the monster and caught in an animation lock, you are going to take damage 99% of the time. Let's move on to the next one, the next state. Next state is recovery neutral. This is actually at the end of all of your attacks. It's still not a real good state or neutral to be in, but it's better than being in a true not neutral situation like number one here. So what can you do out of recovery neutral? Well, uh, there's a couple things you can do and they're right here. You can typically continue your combo you know, if you're doing Y, B attack strings or Y plus B attack strings on PlayStation Triangle Square, you can do the next move in that combo and just keep it going. Now, obviously you don't want to do this. If the monster's about to attack you, you're just going to get hit, but technically you can do that. Uh, the next thing you can do from a recovery neutral is a four direction roll cancel. So you can roll in one of four directions, but if the monster is doing an attack that denies you area, this may still result in you taking damage. For example, if a sweeping motion or their active hitbox is in all four directions, then you, you this, it doesn't matter. If you do a roll cancel, you're still going to take damage. And the last option we have here is, of course, you just take, eat the hit and take damage. Now, believe it or not, even in the roll cancel animation, after the roll cancel, there is a recovery out of the roll cancel. So you can still get hit at the very end of a roll cancel. But remember, you cannot roll cancel out of a roll. So the recovery of a roll cancel is technically a state one so a not neutral so you could go from recovery neutral to roll cancel to not neutral for a brief moment after the roll right and again this state is not it's not the safest to be in i mean you do have the option to roll cancel but this usually works if you're running uh, high levels of evade window that can allow you to iframe moves and even then for multi-hit attacks they can a monster can still hit you out of this or aerial denial attacks where they leave stuff on the ground uh, you're still going to take damage or blights or you know that that sort of thing all right let's move on to the third the third is active neutral okay active neutral is a little special it's basically certain states that are unique to the weapon that you're using that uh, you're not in a a true unsheathed neutral but you're you're doing something that is allowing you that gives you options from that state for example the most classic example is great sword charging where you you go into a charge for great sword and you have you can tackle out of that another active neutral i would consider is insect glaive aerial so if you're in the air there's various actions you can do in the air but um it's still limited compared to the options you have on the ground uh, lance you can go to a power guard longsword you have that ei special sheath state you can go into and these are just a few examples there's obviously more and here are the things you can do from active neutral so like great sword you can tackle longsword you can you only have two options from a ei special sheath the ei spirit slash or the ei slash right these are the only two things you can do you cannot even roll out of a special sheath uh, the last thing is take damage right uh, usually in these special states too because your defensive options like here you don't even have access to roll cancel in a lot of these active neutrals or even guard so your defensive options are extremely limited here and you know uh, one reason you will take damage from going into an active neutral is because the monster is doing a multi-hit attack and usually you if they're if the multi hits are fast enough you cannot respond and defend against each attack from an active neutral so you will take damage in those situations so the thing about active neutral is 
a lot of the brain dead players they'll just tell you to go, always go into active neutral but you have to really study the monster some monsters like obviously the early monsters it's more safer to always go into active neutral because they don't have any threatening attacks that can hit you but the the safest way to approach going into active neutral is to first react to what the monster is doing so see what attack the monster is throwing at you first and then decide whether to go into active neutral now again there it's all of this is time sensitive so even though you uh, identify the monster's attack you still may not have enough time to get into an active neutral state so again this is the debate of whether you're doing gambling hunting or actually trying to uh, execute the proper response to the monster's moves and this is what separates the good players from the the not so good players they're a little bit more responsible about how they approach active neutral all right let's go into the next state you can be in uh the next state is a, a very common state a lot of weapons should be in and that's unsheathed neutral and unsheathed neutral is just unsheathed you have your weapon out ready to fight and there's a lot of things you can do from unsheath neutral. So I'm going to list them right here. So the first thing you can do is a sheath guard. And the reason I'm calling it a sheath guard is because this is a guard for like greatsword and sword and shield that you can just do out of a sheath state or an unsheath state. It's the same guard. And this sheath guard is technically more powerful because you can do it out of unsheath or sheath state. But um, just for the sake of completeness, I'm, I'm keeping it at its own category, sheath guard. Uh, another thing you can do is an unsheathed guard. So for example, charge blade, if you're in sword and shield mode and unsheathed, you can actually just guard with your shield. But the again, here's the difference. You cannot do an unsheathed guard on charge blade if you're sheathed. So again, it's a little bit more limited and it's only accessible in unsheathed neutral. The next thing you can do is walk. Now, the thing about walk is it differs very greatly from weapon to weapon for example in sword and shield the walk speed is almost as fast as the running speed in sheet mode so you can say that the uh, walk is much stronger in sword and shield compared to say greatsword greatsword obviously you just hobble like an idiot so the unsheath neutral state for greatsword is actually much weaker than the sword and shield mode and again that's directly linked to mobility and it d differs from weapon to weapon now obviously comparing greatsword to sword and shield is is a night and day difference but some of these differences here are, are not so black and white like it's a it's very gray area like some weapons you can actually walk pretty comfortably and cover a lot of distance in an unsheathed state so you shouldn't just forego uh the unsheathed neutral state and just start to sheath all the time so it, it's not it's not so uh black and white another thing you can do from unsheathed neutral is go into an omni roll omni roll means you can just point the control stick in any direction and roll in any direction another thing you can do is a slow slinger so you can actually whip out your slinger in monster hunter world iceborne and start firing slinger shots now the reason i'm saying it's called a slow slinger because it actually takes some time to whip out the slinger now for sword and shield it's actually you can it's not a slow slinger it's actually a very fast uh slinger from unsheathed state i think it's actually just as fast as a sheath state so that's where uh, sword and shield has a buffed slinger accessibility uh, same thing with the clutch claw uh you have a slow clutch claw for most weapons especially the heavier weapons but for sword and shield you have a buffed clutch claw accessibility and the the most common things that people do from unsheathed neutral is just start is, is their attack combo starter. So your Y attacks, your B attacks, and your Y plus B attacks, right? So these are all the things that you can do from Unsheathed Neutral. And notice, it's a lot of stuff you can do. It's probably the most balanced state that you can be in. There's a good slew of defensive options. Like it, you have access to guards if your weapon can guard. You have access to Omni Roll. You can sidestep with walking or running if your weapon is light enough. And of course, you have access to offensive options as well, like the Slinger, the Clutch Claw, your, and your uh, Y attack starters, your B attack starters, and your YB attack starters. All right, now let's talk about the last state that you can be in, and it's the most defensive state, I would say, and that is Sheath Neutral, or Sheath State. Now, what are the things you can do from Sheath Neutral? Well, it's quite a bit of stuff, and here they are right here. You can do a Sheath Guard, so Greatsword and SNS. You can guard straight out of a Sheath State. You can sprint. Sprinting pretty much every single attack in Monster Hunter World, with the exception of maybe like very rare cases like um, Runer Nergagante, for example, you can sprint away from every monster's attack in the game. But again, you can only do that from Sheath. Another thing you have access to is a powerful defensive ability called Superman Dive. And that's basically just sprinting away from the monster and doing a double dodge. And this gives you uh, an insane amount of invincibility frames. And it's pretty much you can avoid any attack with these invincibility frames. Uh, another thing you can do is the Omni Roll. Now, that was also in the Unsheath Neutral state as well, but you can also do it at, in a Sheath state as well. Again, another great defensive option. Uh, the thing that all weapons have access to is the Fast Slinger and the Fast Clutch Claw. So you have SNS speeds of 
axes for the slinger and the clutch claw. Another thing you can do is pick up slinger ammo. Another thing you can do is use items. And again, sheath state, you really don't have access to a lot of offensive capabilities. You only have access to draw attack. And sometimes your draw attack is actually not that good and not the right move and not the optimal move to do in certain situations. For example, SNS, if you're doing uh, the, the only draw attack you can do from SNS is the advancing slash and the motion value on that is not that good. Whereas if you stayed in unsheathed for SNS, you can actually have access to one, two combos and uh, just more damaging options by staying in unsheathed state for SNS. So the draw attack is just there like to get you into an attack right away, but most draw attacks are not that good. Uh, the last thing you can do from a sheath neutral state is just unsheath. Just press the Y button or the triangle button and just whip out your weapon. And usually this is pretty fast and sometimes it's actually the best option uh, to uh, start your attack. Uh, depending on your positioning and you know where you're standing and what the monster is doing. Don't dismiss the unsheathed move. All right, so what's the big picture I'm trying to say here? These are the only five possible states that your hunter can be in in Monster Hunter, and these dictate the flow of battle. So for beginners, they're typically going to be caught in this uh, bad state more often than experienced hunters. They're going to be in not neutral because they just don't know the game, right? They're, they're, they don't know the monster attacks, so they're going to try and experiment and just throw out all kinds of attacks, and they're going to get punished for it, but that's just part of the game, right? It's just part of being a beginner. But, you know, if you're trying to get better, you're going to be limiting this ever occurring. You know, most veteran hunters, this never happens during a hunt anymore because they already know the monster moveset. You know what they can get away with and what they can't get away with. Recovery neutral, you know, it's playing a little risky, but it's understanding what you can get away with, right? Uh, you know, the only real defensive option you have from recovery neutral is uh, four direction roll cancel. And again, like I said, you're typically going to need a evade window to do that. Uh, active neutral states is, you know, this requires more monster knowledge to know what is actually safe to go into certain active neutral states so that you can get off your counters and um, pull off your weapon specific moves. And then lastly is unsheath neutral. And this is very weapon dependent again, right? If you're playing a sheath at greatsword style, you will not be in unsheath neutral. Like you're always going to be sheathing. But some weapons greatly benefit from being in a unsheath neutral. And again, you have access to slinger options here in unsheath neutral. Uh, you have defensive options like uh, walking, sidestepping, omni rolling. If your weapon has guard capabilities, you have access to that as well. So it's a very balanced state to be in that, you know, if you're just starting a weapon for the first time, just start playing mostly in unsheathed neutral and try to analyze and see, should I be going into sheath more often or should I be going to active neutral, like bending more towards active neutral more often? or just staying in unsheathed neutral for a majority of my time. And then the last is the most defensive state. It's sheath neutral. You have access to all of the strongest defensive abilities, Superman dive, sprinting, omni rolling, you have guard, uh, you have the fastest slinger ammo and clutch claw animations, and real only offensive capabilities you have is the draw attack.